welcome to the World Summit on the Information Society 2017. I am very pleased to be joined by the German elect of the WISIS Forum, Mr. Jean Philbert Ensingamina. You are also Minister of Youth and ICT in Rwanda. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, to start with, can you tell us about the role ICTs play uh, in sustainable development goals? ICT cuts across all the 17 goals and uh, 190, uh, 69 uh, targets. Uh, I can't think of anything that today you can accomplish without uh, uh, having an element of new technology. And ICT will basically help to uh, push, uh, drive the SDGs on two fronts. One is the speed, because when you apply ICT, you can reach your goal much faster. The second is efficiency, which uh, uh, brings the element of lowering the cost of achieving the SDGs. So whatever you take, whether you are talking about education or agriculture or environment or peacekeeping, ICT will be there to be used just not as a tool, but as an enabler. These are two different things. It is the environment in which everything happens and without which nothing happens. So. Can you tell us about the specific efforts that are being made in Rwanda, for instance, uh, regarding ICT and SDGs? Everything that is being done in Rwanda is aligned uh, with our vision 2020 and uh, soon to be refreshed, upgraded to 2050 with our uh, five-year uh, poverty eradication uh, strategic plan, but also with SDGs. Previously, Rwanda aligned our processes to MDGs and were able uh, perhaps uh, one of the very few countries in Africa that were able to achieve all the MDGs. And, and we are on the way uh, to do the same for the SDGs. We are now better prepared. We are in a better position. We've invested in what it took uh, to realize the MDGs now. I think it's going to be uh, fun. It's going to be a good ride uh, driving the SDGs. But if I ha can pick three examples uh, that are very, uh, are very relevant to, to the discussion. One is the transformation of key uh, uh, sectors of our economy and I'm talking about agriculture, I'm talking about education, I'm talking about uh, government administration, I'm talking about trade. So if I take education for instance, today we are talking about providing the same opportunities uh, to our kids than uh, anyone else in this world has in terms of access to the quality contents that they need to compete for the jobs of tomorrow which we actually don't know. So preparing that generation to be critical thinkers uh, for the soft skills they need to be competitive in the economies of, of tomorrow. I think it's a critical role that only ICT can play. When you talk about healthcare, to, uh, in Rwanda we've launched uh, the distribution of uh, blood using drones just to illustrate how these technologies can save lives. And you have examples of people, mothers, whose lives were saved. You know, uh, after birth they get hemorrhage and then uh, in 15 minutes you get their blood type which was very rare in other circumstances impossible to get it on time so we have those stories of life saved uh, through use of, of ICT and on public administration are talking about building the trust and the confidence of the people in the government in the ability of government to provide services 24-hour basis self-service and really uh, make the citizen participate in shaping policies and programs. So um, that's what I have in Rwanda. But the other thing is we are moving beyond just use of IT as tools, but uh, contributing to research and development, and especially making sure that we shift gears from just being mere consumers to start producing in the context of the fourth industrial revolution. That's an interesting point, and you alluded to it earlier because you talked about young people in ICT. Yeah. Now, the fact that in your home country you are both Minister of Youth and ICT is not just a coincidence, is it? It is not a coincidence. 65% uh, of our active labour force uh, are young people, and when we define young people, we, we talk about 16 to 30 years of age. Um, and 78% uh, of the population is under the age of 35. So we're talking about this huge demographic dividend uh, you know the youth barge which can be a dividend or a risk depending on whether you invest in them or not so um in rwanda president kagame has decided that since the young people are the ones are the engine of development they are the ones that can bring innovation much faster they are the ones that can embrace the risk they embrace the change they drive the change and they are tech savvy for them it's so easy to learn these technologies and to create stuff 
uh, President decided to join these two portfolios. And I want to say that if you want to see that live, join us on 19 to 21st of July. We're going to be hosting the Youth Connect Africa Summit. We're having special guests like Jack Ma joining us to really show how young people just equipped with access to technology can really drive the digital transformation, make money, and grow economies. Minister, thank you very much. Thank you so much to you.